Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to continue with the development of my deep sea ocean base by adding a third donor set into the mix. But first, a few amendments from last time when we did the wonderful Drillex drilling machine, which we kind of chopped in half so it looked like it was coming out of the ground vertically. And there are a few ideas that you came up with that I thought were well worth adding into the scene. So one was uh, to add a motor, and I'm not going to do that, partially because I've pretty much run out of motors using them all in my fairground. But I have loosened up the mechanism so it can be turned by hand without it being sort of frozen because uh, it was attached to the tracks. So that is a small change. Uh, another one is just to change the angle of the kind of flat bed that this thing's sitting on so it's on bare studs here and just raised a little bit there just so it still fits in its original position but you can see it's slightly tipping towards one side and i think that does make it more realistic i think some people wanted a much more uh, significant angle but yeah i'm not going to bother with that because it's going to be tucked in between two buildings that are going to be quite close so if we get too angled it's just going to look a bit weird i think so that's good so i can pin that back in there oh except before i do a third amendment which was probably my favorite actually or one of two really good ones that we're going to be reflecting anyway uh, was to add a burst water pipe and that's why i've added a lot of these little uh, dots here in translite blue because they're reflecting the water sort of spilling out because if this thing did bash through a load of pavement then basically it would probably catch a few things on the way so i'm going to put that in there so we've got kind of a yellow pipe coming out of the wreckage that way spewing water and the same on this side as well different amount uh, and then when i put this back in this time you'll see that most of that is concealed apart from the really good bits splashing water so i think that looks really great so that is a fantastic idea put those things back onto pin it in position looking good uh, and then there was one more which i thought was absolutely hilarious so basically for that i just need to get a little setup here so i can have it coming out at an angle like that and it was to have something else that was caught on the way a poor little rock monster oh no so i think he's been hit by a great big drill and he's a bit worse to wear as a result so basically i can put him onto that modified brick and have him flat out because he was busy uh, eating crystals all on his own, <laughs> very happy. And then basically this thing came along and smashed, uh, well, I don't want to say smashed the life out of him, but smashed his senses out of him anyway. <laughs> but having him sort of sprawled out on the pavement in amongst all the other wreckage, I think is hilarious. And that water pipe really does add a nice splash of colour. So I think those amendments are awesome, actually. <laughs> so here is your collective celebratory bedoing. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I think next time we might have to put this into uh, Brick Nottingham in between the two buildings. And even I think now we can kind of complete up that street all the way up to the cargo area and really finish off the paving, the final positions of it all and really make it look tied in. Because for quite a while, that whole area has looked, well, a bit like a work in progress. So it'd be really good to get that all done once and for all. Cool, right, uh, on to today, and I think the first thing we need to do is a couple of minor amends to our deep sea base. Well, we had quite a few suggestions with the ocean base. Uh, one was just to remove these kind of unsightly handles off the top of the living quarters, just because they're not going to be really moved around by the cranes, I don't think. So I'll just replace those with tiles, and that'll make them look a lot more streamlined. A lot of people wanted the submarines moved to a different floor and the cranes moved and so on, but I think we're going to be dealing with all of that later, so that's not really a problem. Uh, but another major suggestion was to add a moon pool. Now, if you don't know what a moon pool is, it's kind of an easy way uh, that divers can get in and out of the water uh, in, well, an ocean base. Uh, and you might have seen it in the movies. Uh, basically it's kind of like a swimming pool it looks like but because the room uh, that the swimming pool is in is kind of pressurized the water pressure can't push the water up into the cavity and kind of fill it up so it's kind of like just well being in a normal room and then jumping into the sea and it's usually out the bottom so I thought I would put a moon pool kind of in the bottom here not that we're really going to be able to see it that well uh so we had that feature as well and it just explains a lot better how people are getting in and out of this whole area so i think i'm going to be ripping this whole thing apart just so we can make this change let me just try and do it 
with you watching. So essentially I'm going to be removing absolutely everything. Uh, then I'm going to be making this whole support structure different as well even because, well, we need to have space for people to pop out. So essentially I'm going to be moving that to one side. I've got two more from the one we had uh, last time, uh, the additional set I mean. So basically we can have that going to one there. Then we can have a bit of a gap because the part I'm going to use instead of the base that's already on there is this. So this will be the gap that basically divers stand on the edge of and kind of plunge into the deep from. So basically I want that to be like that. So I'm going to want that on there, kind of underneath there. So that'll be like that. Have I done this too high? I think I have. There we go. So that'll be like that. Oh, golly. Right, we'll have to get some tiles to fill in these gaps. And then this whole structure can kind of be on the front. God, I'm getting in a right mess here, aren't I? <laughs> have I done that one too many? There we go. Uh, can't see how it's going to work. There we go. And then that can be like that. That's falling apart as well. Actually, I need that off. This isn't very well planned. There we go. That needs to go there. Ooh. And then that can go in there. This will all make sense, I think, <laughs> once we finally get there. Put that in there. So that will be under there. Obviously, I need a lot of tidying up, but there we go. There is the rough sort of base with our moon pool in it. And then just to make the inside work as well, I'm going to add some two by four plates and then some corner plates. And then one of these pieces kind of on here. So I can attach a ladder to the underside because I think they would still have ladders so they can kind of climb up kind of like when you get out of a swimming pool. And then I can do the same on the other side, Oop, like that. And like, ooh, hold on, like that. There we go. So that would be on the inside of this bottom room, kind of like that. I'm gonna to have to take that floor off there and build it around there. So essentially you could get into the submarines or you could just jump straight in. And I think it is still visible because now we've got the ladders there around all those legs. Yeah, it needs securing a bit, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, if I do a little scene with a couple of divers sort of on their way into or out of the moon pool, I think it'll look really good. So I'm going to finish that because I've made a complete mess uh, and show you what it looks like when it's finished. All right, well, here it is tidied up and looking pretty good, I think. And the good thing about this amendment was that it's practically just used pieces that were already in one of the two donor sets. So that's really good with these extra legs and so on. And you can see that I've added one diver there with a torch and his legs are kind of floating in the water, which gives it a really sort of uh, underwater feel, if you ask me, holding onto that ladder there. And if I get a second one, a lady just holding on to a different ladder. I can put that on the other side and she's a bit further up. So she'll give the impression that she's just coming out halfway in and halfway out. Because when all the rest of this is on the top, we won't really be able to see the top of the moon pool. But I think that gives a good hint with her legs sort of floating in the water that A, this is underwater and B, that there is a good way in and out of the station. So I really like that idea. Thanks very much for that. <laughs> And there is the top view. So I think what we'll do next is kind of build all of this back around. Uh, I'm missing some bits. There we go. Here's the cranes. I'll put them back in their current position now. I think we'll be moving those again later today, to be fair. But it is quite easy to kind of piece together and <laughs> pull apart each time. So there we go. There's the front one with Robin on. And there's the other one. So there is our one floor, our second floor above that. And then, well, I think the next thing <laughs> is to get a third set of 60265, uh, get that built uh, and add that into the mix to make this thing even bigger.
Good, good. Well, here is our double station all back together again. And here, dun dun dun, is station number three to add into the mix. And <laughs> again, I haven't added all of the stickers uh, just because I don't exactly know where I'm going to want them if I'm going to have to chop them and put different numbers on and all the rest of it. But uh, I did build the rest of it kind of faithfully to the old set just so we can uh, see all of the ingredients that are open to us. Uh, now, one suggestion that was given to me about adding all of these things together vertically was to add basically a lot longer a tube kind of in between these sections. So, well, it looked a bit more spread out. Uh, and I do quite like that idea, uh, but I'm not going to do it just because of the space that we're working with in the 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet where this is going to go. If I add three levels vertically, which is what I want to do, and then add quite a sort of sizable tunnel in between levels one, two, and two and three, then it's going to be ridiculously tall. And <laughs> well, the surface of it's pretty much going to break the waves and be a hazard to shipping. So I definitely can't do that. I may make them a little bit more spaced out, but um, not with a great big long tube anyway. So if I just pull these off here briefly, so I can pull this off here safely, relatively safely. And I've still got the open back on this one uh, as it currently stands. Now, I do want to make this three tier. So I'm just going to put these back on to show you. Uh, and basically that will make it kind of like that. Uh, and if I take this one off, because this is kind of a living quarters one as well, and stick that on the front of this, it's come with a pin. Let me leave that behind in there. Then that is kind of how that will look. And then we'll have the third submarine on the, well, what is now becoming the submarine floor, except we've got an issue there because of these engines all clashing. So we're gonna to have to do something about that. Uh, but that is going to be sort of the main sort of setup. Now, because we aren't including those neck pieces in between the different levels, it just looks absolutely crammed, doesn't it? Packed and stacked, but in, well, kind of a bad way, really. So I need a solution to get around this problem. And one idea, which somebody predicted actually in the comments last time, but I always had in the plan, was to turn one of the sections by 45 degrees. So it kind of looks like that. And that breaks up this monotony of having sort of all these pods vertically above each other, by having them at completely different angles. And that makes it look really interesting as well. So I'm not gonna do that to the top level. I'm gonna do that to the middle level over here. Oh, and if we get these cranes out of the way, I'm kind of going to have that one like, well, let's do it like that so we can see it a bit better. And then I can have this one back on the usual orientation and it will look like that. And then if we imagine the uh, engine clash problem is sorted, we've got a really, really interesting shape of a space station. I mean, it kind of looks like a star now, doesn't it? With everything coming out in absolutely every direction at once. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave the submarine problem for another day. Uh, but this I'm definitely going to sort with some 45 degrees shenanigans. All right, well, at the moment, we've got these plates dividing the two levels, and they're kind of lined up like that, as you'd expect them to be. And what we're going to be doing is turning one of them 45 degrees, so it's on a diagonal, and then attaching it kind of like that. And you'll see that it works perfectly because, well, it's a very regular shape, so we're all right there. Uh, and the way that I'm going to connect the two is by using one of these rather large 4x4 sort of turntable pieces that does clip onto the underside of these things. So basically that will go like that and then we can turn it and it's attached. Uh, now it does wiggle a bit so we'll have to be careful that it doesn't sort of fly around but that might be quite good fun actually, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I do want to plug up this kind of unsightly gap in between the two. So if I just pull that off again, oh, predictably it's come off with the wrong bit so let me attach that again. Uh, and I'm going to use dark blue as my color for this uh, because, well, it's in keeping with the rest of it. And also I had quite a few of these tiles already. And I'm going to use the triangular ones on the end there and also the kind of one that is that shaped, whatever you'd call that, on the diagonals just to fill up so it's completely uh, well, seamless, as I always say. So there we go. So it's a bit of an odd combination of tiles and that you need one of those and one of those on each of the uh, corners to make it work. But I think the result is going to be worth using all these complicated pieces. 
So there we go. Let's do that all the way around. And there we've got a very nice dark blue band completely in line with everything else. So when we add this on, we can then do that 45 degree angle. And well, that looks absolutely perfect, doesn't it? So I've got two of these because I'm going to need two of them, of course. One to take it onto the diagonal uh, between levels one and two, and then between two and three to kind of take it off the diagonal back onto straight. So I'm going to incorporate both of these into this. Uh, and then I'm probably going to start thinking about, well, crane positions and stuff like that. Ho, 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 look at that. The tower grows. <laughs> Doesn't it look absolutely great with the bottom one straight, the second one on 45 degrees, and then this one will be, of course, straight again. So kind of like that. Yep. Uh, and I've added another one of those windows on there just for a bit of variety that we will probably be spurring off in all sorts of different directions soon. Uh, I've added the crane up there, though I think we're probably going to move it. And then just to finish off and kind of add all of these on. This one's a bit harder to do. There we go. And there. Oh, ho, ho. yes. Look at that. That's starting to look really, really busy and fantastic. It might be that we want to add one more layer of these bricks in between each section just to space them out. But then again, I kind of like it dense. So that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, I like that. So we need to remove all these treasure chests for now. Well, two of those. Well, I must have three somewhere. Bottles, bicycle chain, uh, bicycle chains, bicycle frames. And I've actually got a pair of these plates now. So I might actually add them to a car. That might be quite interesting. Or maybe I'll just have them uh, floating around the depths. Uh, so yeah, that's looking good. And I've got these bits that were from the other sets. I've got a pair of those. So I figured I'd probably add them to the third one of these sort of submarine launching bits because, well, it must be something to do with the refueling or something like that. So that makes it look even better. And apart from the engine clash, that is how it currently looks. So yeah, it will be irregular in the sense that we'll have the odd one missing because of it having a window. And I think I'm going to do a kind of airlock door version of that in due course as well. But doesn't it look fantastic? And I've got a few more of these kind of fans now because there's one with each set. So I've got three and I'm only using the one on the very top here. So we've got lots of capacity to kind of spur off this and go, well, horizontally now we've got all this height. Uh, so I think that's going to look great. But one thing I definitely think I can improve on, well, before all of that, is moving these cranes. Now, a lot of people didn't like them where they were, sort of reaching sort of horizontally almost to try and work on a submarine. But now we've got this 45 degree difference. It's very easy for them to kind of go down to the layer above through the sort of gap in their own level but where there'll be a kind of a unit in the level below, if that makes sense. So I reckon the best place to put them all is to have uh, one basically in the level above for each of the submarines. So I'm going to have one kind of mounted here that will work this submarine, one that will be mounted right under here that will work that submarine, and one that will be in here that will work that submarine. And that way, they'll kind of be directly above where they're being used, kind of like that. And they'll be absolutely perfectly placed. So that's another benefit of doing this sort of 45 degree angle type change. So I'm going to take it all apart again <laughs> and do that this time. Right, and there are the cranes in position where they really should be, one above each of the submarines. And this one's actually attached to this one, guiding it back in because it's not fully docked yet. And the third one over here. So I think that really works with this regular splash of red and the crane operating kind of in the gap in between two pods on the floor above. So I think that solves quite a few problems and probably has made a good case for having the submarines on the bottom level and for the placement of the cranes and them having enough space to operate. So I do like that now. Uh, now, what with all this building, rebuilding, unbuilding and all the rest of it, I've run out of time today. So I'm not going to be able to take this to the next level, which will be really taking it off at a high level onto, well, 
a lot further, basically. But one thing I did want to do while I've still got time is maybe add just a few fish just swimming past this window. So somebody on the inside who could be waving at a diver on the outside could both be enjoying the view of the fish going by. So I thought I'd just use a few sort of uh, modified plates or something like that in place of some of the bricks maybe here and maybe even on this yellow section here. And then I can kind of just clip a few of my fish in place. Uh, just a little shoal of maybe two or three. Now I could use silver, but that's probably not going to show up very well. Uh, so how about this blue colour? They look quite good, don't they? Yeah, that's quite a good contrast. Or maybe the orange. Anyway, I'll have a bit of a play and then we'll just have that as a final scene for today's video. Cool. And how about that? I think that works really well, doesn't it? Just a few fish, but uh, a good contrast. And I think I'll be doing this sort of thing all over the place, really, just to suggest that, well, loads of fish and life and plants and all the rest of it are just going by about their daily business without a care in the world. But I think, yeah, that looks really good hidden behind this crane, which I'll kind of reattach now just for the thumbnail of this video. There we go. That's looking good, isn't it? And the good thing about these whole sections, so the section above that I'm just about to add back on, is they kind of pop off onto those uh, turntable pieces really easily. So you just heard that one pop back on. And yeah, that looks really good. So uh, I've really enjoyed putting this together again, and uh, I'm really looking forward to next week when I think we'll be doing another section of this and taking it to the whole next level again. Though I don't mean literally this time, because uh, I think three levels high is probably enough. Next time, I think we need to go out more. Wow, I think you'll agree this will be a really good centrepiece to my 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet. It is just so high now, with so much going on, all these different angles, the cranes, the pipes, the tanks, the... Wow, it just looks absolutely great already. And there's more to come. <laughs> I think at least two more sessions worth uh, to do this, uh, well, spreading out yet further. Uh, and then there'll be more bases under the sea in due course as well. So yeah, this is really good fun. Really enjoying it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it do check out the links in the description below. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing another mock build on Monday. Don't know what yet. Uh, then on Wednesday, we'll be doing a brick haul. And if you want to send something, you can to the usual address. Uh, and then on Friday, well, we just absolutely have to come back to this, don't we? Uh, just to do the next uh, set of developments for this. I've got loads of ideas and uh, yeah, it's going to be amazing when it's done. Anyway, until all of that, see you. Ooh, nice.